Now, there are a couple of other types of research. There are focus groups. I'm sure most of you have heard of focus groups. They tend to consist of representative users that are clustered together in a room and asked a set of structured questions with a structured set of choices. Now, if you do some research on focus groups, if you look online, you'll see that focus groups do get a bad rap sometimes. They can be very useful, but they need to be very structured. When you have open-ended focus groups, that's when you tend to have trouble. You also need to make sure they are representative users. I'm going to show you a video in a minute, but I want to give you a quick story that I read quite a number of years ago about a failed focus group. How many of you have heard of the Nova, the Chevy Nova? Does it even still exist? No, it doesn't exist anymore? All right, so the Chevy Nova in its time, right, a couple of you have heard of it, was very popular. Right? It was one of the most popular cars in the US. Right? It's a Nova. It's Space Age, right? What an awesome name. Well, <coughs> the name actually was developed, from what I understand, primarily from a focus group of Americans up north someplace. So now the company wanted to take this vehicle to Central and South America. So they go, they take it to Central and South America, and it was a bomb. No one would buy this car. Some of you already got it. Nova? What does that mean? It doesn't go. Are you going to buy a car whose name is doesn't go? Yeah, not so much. So you do have to be very, very careful when you use things like this. May have worked great for the US, not so much for anyone who speaks Spanish. They weren't very representative. All right, I'm going to show you a quick video, hopefully. I didn't get a chance to check this one this morning, but hopefully uh, this link will work. If not, I know how to find another one. This is my favorite example. Oops, hold on. This is my favorite example of a focus group. Okay, so which one tasted better? Oh, Steve. Yeah, the guy. With Lisa, I only tasted peanut butter and chocolate. Lisa had just eaten a peanut butter cup. But with Steve, I tasted something more. It was peanut butter and uh, Snickers. Right. Yeah. Steve had just eaten Snickers peanut butter oh, squared. Steve was delicious. Yeah. I'd love another taste. Oh, certainly. Eat both squares, please. If you like peanut butter and chocolate, you'll love peanut butter and Snickers. Try new Snickers peanut butter squared. All right, so there's our focus group. <laughs> now, what are some of the elements that you noticed of that focus group that I mentioned? They were representative. They were or they weren't representative? They were representative, right? There were a bunch of sharks. Now, what else? Well, it could be that they, are, they need to be different types of sharks. I didn't take a close look. Or they may say, what, those were what? They looked like what, great whites or something? Yeah, they eat a lot. That's our, that's our target user. All right, so they also had a structured set of choices. All right, did you notice that? It was very direct. All right, so they had a structured set of choices. We had our representative users that had very specific questions they wanted answered. That's what works well with focus groups. Because not everything works well with focus groups. So focus groups are useful for gaining initial reactions to the form of a product. Did you see that in our focus group? I did. No? Yes? It's visual appeal, and maybe it's industrial design, in this case how it tastes. Right, so it can be really good at those things. It's not good at everything. What is it weak at? 
gathering data about what people actually do with those products or how or why they do that. Now, one of the reasons for this is because you have a group of people. Who knows what tends to happen when you have a group of people that are talking about something? They might um, coincide on certain um, arguments because of somebody else said it. Yeah. Right, so they might just you know, agree with what some, you know, someone else says just because they're part of the group. This is part of group psychology. We have a tendency to try to reach consensus. So, is that part of the video still? Or <laughs> is that, I, you know, I haven't found that in the video. No, that, no, that, that no, sound. That, no, that's oh, that sound. It's, they're testing the emergency system. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was still the browser. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like, I'll even close this. No, it's oh. the phone. Oh, it's the emergency it's the phone. Oh. Hold on. Oh, you're right. I wonder if you can, aha, stop. Thank you. Here we go. <laughs> See, if only that would have come when I was talking about attention, right? That would have worked. Oh, where did I go? Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, if only they would schedule it for me. All right, so in groups, just being in a group, we te it tends to drive consensus. So if, even if you have a group of people who are, who are agreeing on something, and even if you have one individual who disagrees, they're significantly more likely to sit there and not say anything and just say, I agree. Right? Because we have a tendency to try to fit in with our social group. Now, this is not to say that we never will say things if we feel something strongly about something, if we disagree with the group, but we are more likely to try to reach consensus. And this can be a problem because that may not be representative of what most users do when they are using a product. As designers, we need to understand all the different patterns of behavior that may occur with a product because most products we don't use as a group. Make sense?